Well, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Ella Thorpe with uh, Trust and Longevity. As the doctor, anything we do this the um, uh, sec no every Tuesday of every week uh, at six o'clock in the evening. And our our goal in doing this is to try and provide our patient population, uh, their family and friends, and anyone else who has interest in alternative functional medicine, integrative medicine complementary medicine, how we medical doctors who are trained with standard allopathic methods and have our specialties and so forth, how we would approach various uh, questions, signs, symptoms uh, before we would try, um, you know, medications, imaging, surgeries and stuff when appropriate. So this isn't meant to be treatment over the internet. This is meant for educational purposes. And so what we do every week is we have these series of uh, internet questions. If you are not on our uh, mailing list, uh, go to tlcdoctors.com and you can sign up to be on our mailing list. And then we will uh, put a link on there when we notify you every week uh, what that we're doing this um, courtesy um, question and answer thing. And there's a link on that email so you could type in a question. And that's what I have here in my hand. I have one, two, three pages. Um, we're getting to be a, a big group. And so I am not necessarily able to get through all the questions. So I'll be starting with last week, the 23rd of January, and trying to go through them as quickly as possible. And uh, then we have the live chat here, those who are watching online. If they have questions, we will defer to uh, the live questions. So if you are on YouTube and you uh, can uh, chat uh, through it, then uh, go ahead and put your chats there. So here we are. Uh, we have another new doctor, uh, Dr. Amber, and uh, she's internal medicine um, board certified, and she worked for um, about eight or nine years in a hospitalists uh, working in the hospital for all the <clears throat> internal medicine admissions. And she has just um, decided that there needs to be more prevention training and teaching because chronic uh, disease is at least 90% of all uh, healthcare dollar bill costs. And if we don't start teaching this and how our lifestyle, the foods we're eating or not eating that we should be, and water and exercise and good sleep, these kind of things will um, impact us and we will develop chronic medical uh, problems. The sad thing is our young people, uh, children and uh, teenagers are getting uh, so sick at earlier ages. Diabetes is an epidemic now in our teenage group. Fatty liver disease is uh, at alarming high numbers of our uh, teenagers and uh, we need to uh, educate ourselves. We need to uh, put on our big boy and big girl pants and, and uh, start being firm about uh, the junk food and lifestyle behaviors, prolonged sitting, YouTube video viewing times, lack of outdoor play and sunshine and fresh air. Uh, all these things we need to uh, stop being uh, trained in this lifestyle of uh, sedentary YouTube, uh, not uh, uh, socializing uh, and being outside and moving and playing. And uh, I would add to that, um, shore up the home unit family with a, a dinner and a, a uh, family dinner that's homemade and with uh, real food. So it's real simple, real food, real movement, uh, real water instead of uh, prepared drinks, and that includes lattes and frattes or whatever those things are called at the coffee shops, and uh, juicing, things like this that artificially sugar up uh, what you're drinking. So real food, real movement, uh, real sleep hygiene, and, uh, uh, you know, the low-carb uh, uh, way of uh, living. So the first um, question I didn't get to last week was from Deborah. Dear uh, Dr. Alathorpe, my friend had pericarditis in 2020, what really is a very rare um, entity, uh, and a year ago had it again. That's incredibly amazing. Just last week, she started to feel the same symptoms, extreme fatigue, weakness. Her doctor advised colchicine, 
but she doesn't like taking pharmaceutical drugs. Could you suggest something for the inflammation that would be alternative? Thank you. Well, all the healthy lifestyle, she has to eat real food, stay away from everything processed and ultra refined food. So a real piece of meat, fish, chicken, turkey, beef, uh, a real uh, piece of vegetable um, and a real salad and a real glass of water, not eating past uh, six o'clock in the evening, getting out and taking a walk as tolerated or exercising with some resistance training and be extremely low carb. Um, and the systemic enzymes um, act as anti-inflammatories. We would use Vitalzyme or Vascuzyme here, systemic enzymes. And taken on an empty stomach twice a day uh, where there's no food to digest in your stomach, like first thing in the morning and the last thing before you go to bed, if you took five or six uh, uh, capsules, uh, and then that anti-inflammatory, along with the uh, correct amount of water, take about half your weight in pounds as ounces of water every day. Uh, that's a very good starting point uh, to help uh, with that. And find a doctor who is a functional doctor who will uh, check fasting insulin, triglyceride, fasting blood sugar, and hemoglobin A1C, sedimentation rate, a D-dimer maybe, a D-dimer uh, is associated with the inflammation of sticky blood sugar, sticky carbs, uh, inflamed blood uh, prone to clotting. So a D-dimer, uh, HSCRP, things like that. <clears throat> the next one, Doug, I got quadruple heart bypass surgery in September of 22. Docs tried several statins, which caused muscle and joint problems. Now they want to try some weekly or monthly injections of something else to minimize cholesterol. Can I use detoxamine in conjunction with these meds? The answer is yes, Doug. What other supplements should I use or other advice? Well, you have to follow your doctor's advice, your cardiologist's advice, uh, but I am not a fan of statins. Uh, the a uh, YouTube video that you might consider watching by Dr. Ken Berry and Dr. David Diamond is called High Cholesterol is Good for You because you have to remember these cell membranes that have been injured in your heart or the lining of your blood vessels, these cell membranes have uh, a tremendous need for cholesterol in them and the essential fatty acids, phospholipids, and uh, that is only going to come to you if you're eating real food and stay away from packaged food. The uh, inflammation uh, that is associative uh, with the cause of damage to the endothelial lining uh, would be helped with adequate water. The inflammation uh, from sticky sugar and food allergies would be helped with eating a one menu day on a rotation so that you would assign uh, day one to be maybe beef and broccoli for dinner, and then you make enough so you could uh, have it pre-ready to warm up for uh, your lunch the next day. Uh, notice I said no breakfast because we believe intermittent fasting is very helpful also to um, uh, disinflame your body, to detoxify. So eating only a two meal day in a uh, window of time, uh, no further than six hours, uh, depending on your unique situation. If you're an insulin dependent diabetic, of course, your physician would have to help you with this, but it is possible to achieve. And uh, adequate water, um, half your pounds of weight as ounces of water every day. Uh, moving to a carnivore diet uh, would probably frighten your cardiologist, but it'll greatly disinflame your body, reducing your fasting sugar, which is associated with uh, cardiovascular disease, all diabetics have uh, high average blood sugars and they're associated with the increased clear uh, uh, risk of having uh, vascular disease. It's one of the uh, uh, down the line uh, side effects of being a diabetic. So uh, <clears throat> uh, if you became a carnivore, that would be helpful. And then uh, exercise, walking, uh, motion, and then a good night's sleep, and never eating late. Uh, eating late of itself is a multidimensional impact of harming the human body. Uh, 
Detoximin is EDTA chelation therapy in a suppository form that I did research on and published on and found uh, great value to uh, uh, association of uh, reduced uh, inflammation because it improved the microcirculation, improved nitric oxide uh, production and vasodilation. Those are things. Find a good uh, functional doctor. Uh, go to ACAM, A-C-I-M dot O-R-G, ACAM dot O-R-G, and uh, put in your um, zip code or uh, a distance you're willing to travel. Maybe you could find a good uh, functional doctor. But do stay in touch with your local doctor's care. Um, but clearly, I would certainly recommend uh, the systemic enzymes twice a day on an empty stomach. I would recommend vitamin D with K2 uh, every day, 5,000 international units uh, of vitamin D3 with probably K2, somewhere between 90 and 180 um, uh, uh, units, and do that every day. That would be a starter. Um, Amela, hi, Dr. E. My friend's daughter has endometriosis. That's a high carb processed food generated insulin stimulating disease. She is 23. What is your advice to keep it under control? I'm telling you, everybody, uh, we would do ourselves very, very well if we would eat in a fixed window of time, eat real food, not processed, and uh, keep low carb. Uh, rich in the healthy phospholipids, protein, and fats that we need. Uh, move our bodies on a regular basis. I will be going to, I've got my, my bag here to get my gym shoes and my workout clothes on uh, after, right after we're done here. So I, I do my weight training still. I do it twice a week now, and then I have my uh, aerobics uh, every day now, especially with having my dogs to walk. And that one is 77 pounds, the other is 52. So they they really are hard to walk. So uh, you have to move. You have to be low carb. You have to drink your water. You have to have good sleep hygiene and um, not eat late. And um, that's how I would begin with that. And it's an unpleasant thing. But these junk foods are fake entertainment for the mouth fake um, uh, uh, nutrient uh, components. They are not uh, good for our bodies and they are making us all sick. So we have to get away from uh, processed foods, uh, sugar drinks, and uh, eat real food. That's what I would tell her. And then have a good doctor follow her insulin uh, fasted with her fasting blood sugar, her fasting triglycerides, and her hemoglobin A1c and if she can get her triglycerides uh, somewhere around the 50s, her insulin to 4 or less, her hemoglobin A1C to 5.2% or less, and her fasting blood sugar under 85, uh, this endometriosis should dry up. Another thing is she should probably be on uh, progesterone uh, day 15 through 25 of her menstrual cycle. That's what we do to our, for our patients. Um, Robin says, similar question to my past regarding whether to have a colonoscopy or not. Uh, since my last submission of this question, I had gone to my old liberal doctor and he had me do the fecal globulin by immunoassay. Results on the Insure trademark card, um, ad adequate quality of a sample, uh, fecal globulin not detected. Any other tests available? <clears throat> well, if you did the Cologuard, uh, C O L O G U A R D, you can learn about that. Uh, but I am biased, and my bias is uh, <clears throat> regarding colonoscopies. When I was uh, around 38, uh, my brother-in-law, who was 45-ish, uh, roughly, married to my sister, older sister, was working with my husband on carpentry uh, when I was on active duty at Fort uh, Knox. And uh, the uh, he was in good shape. I say that he was working on construction because obviously he was working very fine. Uh, after the job was done, we had a beautiful steak lit dinner, and a week later, my sister called me saying that uh, David had both ankles uh, swollen. 
that's very unusual for a 44, 45 year old man. So, you know, I was surprised and he didn't want to go to doctors. <clears throat> so I told her, look at, put his feet up and, and, uh, you know, give him a little fasting. Um, and then uh, if he's not better within a week, uh, let me know. She called me back in a week and the edema didn't go away, swelling to both his ankles that went up to his uh, knees. And that's uh, tremendously abnormal. I hospitalized him and got a CT on him. And he had colon cancer, metastatic, stage four uh, already. He had no symptoms whatsoever. And he died three weeks later. So when you ask me about doing a colonoscopy, and this was in 1995, uh, I'm biased that uh, everyone should have a colonoscopy. And uh, they have lowered the age for doing it from uh, 50. Now it's down to 45. And of course, if you have a family history of colorectal cancer, which is not that uncommon, they're lowering it as much as to even age 35. So um, colon uh, screening for colorectal um, uh, cancer, which is very manageable in early ages, is what I recommend. Um, Rosa uh, says, hello, my doctor, my mother is 97 years old. Wow, that's a wonderful age. And she has not been doing well in the last month. She does not eat very much, not even one full meal and does not like to drink fluids. She has diverticulitis, which gives her loose stools and seems like she has irritable bowel. She has a deep vein thrombosis now being followed. What do you recommend for her nutrition and IBS? Um, <clears throat> you know, in general, if that was my mother and my patient, I would, uh, uh, you know, want to know about any other medicines she's on, comorbidities and so forth. But on the surface of this, uh, using um, a uh, clear liquid broth uh, for two days, plenty of uh, chicken broth, beef broth, and then uh, giving her um, the phospholipid powder in warm water, mixing the phospholipid powder in warm water, just like you would have warm water to make a baby bottle up for a baby. And if you used <clears throat> the phospholipids, uh, we use this so much and it works so well for every everything because this is what we're made of. So if you're saying what's in these cell membranes in any injured cell in your body, it is phospholipids, protein, and here's the phospholipid fat, and the next middle jar is the SBI Protect powder, and the probiotic 225. Uh, is a powdered form of probiotics. So you can mix this all in warm water and give it to her first thing in the morning and last thing in the evening. And uh, this will improve uh, healing the lining of all the cells in her gut to help heal it. Uh, the clear liquid broth diet will reduce the work of the digestion. And uh, then when I enter uh, uh, foods, I would uh, give her uh, things like salmon, uh, uh, slow roasted uh, beef uh, that falls apart, like, you know, cooking a uh, chuck roast for four or five hours at 100 and I mean, 275 for five hours uh, for, you know, an hour, roughly an hour per pound, uh, makes it almost fall apart. Uh, and you can mash it up. It's such uh, delicious and this low heat cooking helps preserve the nutrient uh, activities. The probiotics will help uh, the bacteria uh, that um, uh, inflammation in the colon would have. And uh, she probably, if she had diverticulitis, was on antibiotics. That would be my start point on that, uh, Robin. Um, or I'm sorry, Rosa. That would be my start point on that. And I would certainly give her vitamin D as well, uh, vitamin D3, uh, about 10,000 international units a day. And then have her blood checked and see her uh, doctor. Leah says, good evening, Dr. Alathorpe. Happy New Year. Happy New Year back to you, Leah. And may God bless you. And he is. Um, I have been seeing a lot of information on parasite protocols. And some saying it's good for everyone to do. What are your thoughts and what would you recommend if you do a protocol? Thank you. I don't do these parasite protocols. And I don't um, see it. I test I, and have been testing complete digestive stool analysis for the last 30, 35 years. 
uh, using uh, very sophisticated techniques with uh, uh, Great Smokies um, uh, Medical Center um, or Great Smokies, uh, um, you know, stool kit by Dr. Levine uh, since the early 90s. Then I now I'm using Genova with uh, doctor's data. And I just don't see these worms and parasites. And so I think this is uh, something that is burping up in the um, paraprofessional group. Um, and I just don't see any value to it. Um, also like uh, drinking this olive oil drink to flush out gallstones. This has uh, never been of value. Uh, what you see in the toilet, if you drink all that is uh, uh, bile uh, missiles. And when, you, when the green bile squeaks out to help digest all that fat, that green bile will be seen in little clumps. And when you have a bowel movement, uh, these people say it's a, a stone. Same with earwaxing, um, uh, that is foolishness. And I uh, have looked into this sincerely. I did a doctorate in integrative medicine. And so I want what works and I understand the intention of people. And sometimes just a caring person is healing medicine uh, of itself. Uh, so I don't mean to put down any paraprofessional. I actually assume responsibility as a medical doctor that we doctors have been too um, uh, unapproachable, too arrogant, too opinionated. And the older I get, uh, the more abrupt and, and opinionated I am because, you know, I'm not going to live forever. And so I want to uh, say it like it is and get the facts out there. Uh, but I, I hope to do it in a loving and tolerant way. I, I am not in favor of these parasite cleanses. Um, I would far, far say you will do better if you will eat only ref, uh, real food, only eat in a window of time, drink half your weight as pounds as ounces every day, uh, get a good night's sleep, don't have lights on, uh, noise and stuff like that, and uh, get some movement and exercise and be extremely low carb, uh, which would be uh, a more carnivore-like diet, uh, uh, getting all these sugars and fruit sugars out of your diet. That would do far more uh, to prevent uh, a worm infestation by building up your immune system that way. I just haven't seen it. And so when I do see the occasional, uh, uh, you know, Entamoeba histolytica or Entamoeba fragilis, uh, various uh, parasites, um, I do treat them. I do use natural things like grapeseed extract, uh, colloidal silver. Um, um, what else, you know, some of these, uh, oils, uh, but, um, really it's not a thing. So Leah, uh, hopefully that helps you. Uh, Jay says, is there a benefit to hormone replacement therapy to maintain good numbers for cholesterol D3 hemoglobin A1C postmenopause? Yes. A thousand percent. Or is it better to be natural and let nature be? Um, age 53, not taking any medication and no ailments, slightly overweight and combined cholesterol of uh, 201. Jay, I would say <clears throat> we are living in a different world with marketing. Uh, uh, people are uh, uh, attached to their cell phone hand computers, they are being marketed to, spoken to, uh, and uh, the diet and drink industry, uh, the health food, alleged quote unquote health food industry uh, is putting out uh, materials that I don't consider health food at all. Um, and all these energy drinks and all these green drinks uh, are so untested and such a immunologic daily exposure of a high volume of food um, uh, lectins and uh, uh, signature uh, proteins and, and structures that your immune system uh, can develop uh, reactions to them through the tiny uh, injuries that are in the cell membrane there. So if you're taking down that green drink or that smoothie you make every day, you are just asking to develop uh, food sensitivities. Um, 
it would be better to drink real whole food. I mean, not drink, eat real whole whole food. If you're going to have blueberries one day, eat a, a cup of it. If you're going to have uh, spinach, eat a, a salad um, with spinach. If you're going to have, uh, what else would you uh, put into it? I never do shakes, so I don't know, but it would be better to eat the real thing and then the next day have a different vegetable, maybe arugula and strawberries. The next day have kale and uh, uh, blue blackberries or something rather than these uh, drinks that were uh, uh, blending up and releasing all the uh, glucose, pre-digesting it. So we get a higher sugar spike, which means a higher insulin spike, which means it stimulates fat storage and thickening of the intima of the lining of the blood vessels, promoting heart disease and uh, insulin resistance, diabetes, and uh, suppressing the immune system with higher sugars, which reduces uh, your ability to fight off viruses, which stresses your immune system that will not be able to fight off a, uh, a tumor stem cell that maybe normally your killer cells would have picked up. And so it's just a lousy uh, marketing world we're living in. And we have to fight this uh, off. Now, given that also, we're going into menopause and hormone deprivation scenarios far sooner. Uh, we're doing it foolishly, foolishly through birth control usage that's given out like candy and denying women their normal developmental natural bioidentical hormones using these, these synthetics. Uh, and their bone density totals are failing them. Uh, by the time uh, they get to uh, menopause, they're already in a significant state of this. And we already have like 50 years of this abuse on women. Men are having low T levels, testosterone levels. And so uh, fertility is declining. So uh, hormones are general contractors that help our skin, our hair, our um mood, our strength, our muscle tone, our immune system, our bone health, even our cardiovascular system. And we are pelting these with uh, neuroendocrine disruptors. Even the receipts you get uh, from your cash register uh, has that BPA film on it for a laser uh, printing of the numbers. And you touch it and you are absorbing that, which is an endocrine disruptor. So do I think hormones are important? Absolutely. Do I use them? I use them every day of my life. I joke with my husband that when I die and go in the casket, I want a supply of my hormones put in there with me. Um, uh, I just uh, have normal bone density at, at 70. I have normal, um, uh, you know, labs in general and uh, my muscle mass and, and, all is, is so very, very good. So yeah, I am very much in favor of bioidentical uh, hormones given by a doctor who has experience uh, or is working under the supervision of a doctor helping to train, because I'm training other doctors doing this, and uh, monitoring follow-up with uh, pelvics. Like a lot of women will say, should I do a pelvic uh, if I'm uh, married to the same man and uh, uh, we're monogamous and uh, I'm not uh, um, having any uh, problems, do I still have to do a pelvic after menopause? And my answer is yes, because you're on hormones. So when we have hormones, we want to treat you like you are a younger biological woman. And so we do monitoring and management. And that's why we do so exceedingly well here. We thank the Lord so much for our healthy patients and the uh, leadership the Holy Spirit has given us here. Um, Sandy says, I'm wondering if you could explain a little more about systemic enzyme. I have definitely benefited from them for my arthritis. I use Vascuzyme and it looks like many of the ingredients are the same as orthodigestzyme, uh, yet you have, have to take Vascuzyme on an empty stomach. I'm wondering how they are both for digestion and for other things, thanks in advance. Well, God is a very uh, great God and he is very economical and he uses enzymes and many other uh, things like B12 and magnesium and hundreds and thousands of uh, biochemical um, actions in our human body. Therefore, we say 
uh, there are similarities to the enzymes in digestion, but one thing you won't see in systemic enzymes that is an orthodigestion is betaine hydrochloric acid, which you need to help digest proteins and fats. The other thing is ox bile uh, to help with fat digestion as well. So um, they are different. Digestive enzyme needs to be when you're eating food, systemic enzymes, which would be the protease, the lipase, and the uh, amylase, these kind of things uh, can be seropeptase, bromelain, all these can be taken on an empty stomach, which then are absorbed systemically to disinflame, you know, your, your thumb if you hit it with a ham or your sinuses if they're congested with seasonal allergies. So that's the difference. I also did, if you go to our uh, TLC um, uh, Tustin Longevity Center YouTube and you type in in the search joint, uh, you'll see my whole lecture on enzymes and so forth as well as uh, uh, joint health and so forth. All right, so that handles that one. Let's go to our live a little bit. Uh, on the live one, we have, um, Annette says, uh, thank you, Dr. Rita, for all you do. Well, God bless you for that. Just a little statement like that, Annette. It means a lot. Uh, you're made in the image of God. Uh, you're created, you're valuable, you're special. All people are special, male, female, whatever race uh, they are. Uh, we're all, all of the same race. Uh, uh, and our parents are Adam and Eve. That's how I see everyone. And so it's beautiful to try and help every single creation of God. Sophie says, hi, Dr. Rita. Can hormone receptors at cell level be triggered? Uh, what would cause of blockage be? How can it be addressed? Would heavy metals be responsible? Thank you. Can hormone receptors at cell level be triggered? Well, the membrane of all cells are the eyes, ears, nose, throat, and touch uh, for the cell. Uh, it's a receptor for the communication in the interior of the cell and the machinery and magnificence inside the cell. So yeah, the, there are receptors there what would cause blockage be? Well, there are hormone um, uh, mimicking agents and hormone uh, blocking um, uh, herbs and, and chemicals out there. For instance, Don Quai, uh, <clears throat> black cohosh, these herbs are um, uh, mimicking. Uh, they have similarities to the structure of estradiol. And so they will have some uh, docking and ability to give um, a message that estradiol is present. There are some things that are blockers um, out there, um, natural hormone blockers and synthetics. And <clears throat> what could cause blockage B? Uh, I'm not sure I totally understand your question. How can it be addressed? Uh, well, you have to see a medical doctor who's uh, experienced in functional medicine integrative and natural hormone therapy. And you have to be prepared and willing to be uh, responsible for your choices and, and get off of the uh, processed food train and the gimmicks on internet. Um, how can it be addressed? Would, any, would heavy metals be responsible? Well, um, heavy metals are not organic. They are metals. And there is no digestive enzyme or anything that can... Um, um, detoxify uh, toxic metals. So we're breathing it in. If you see those horrible lines in the sky, in the stratosphere, uh, those uh, geo uh, um, stratospheric engineering uh, chemtrails, and they have heavy metals, aluminum, arsenic, uh, strontium, uh, uh, what else, borons in them. I'm not sure if arsenic is in them, uh, but I wouldn't put it past them. And they've been doing this for close to 100 years. And so it is landing on our land and we're eating it and we're breathing it and we're drinking it. So uh, <clears throat> these are oxidizing damage. They're like knives, metal knives, cutting your cells all the time. So EDTA chelation is extremely smart. Get a measurement first with a challenge with urine collection so we can get a feel for the volume and the number that you have. But you need to um, see a good doctor, Sophie, on that. Hopefully that gives you some guidance. 
the Beagle Mom. Hi. Do you have any information on the body that measures muscle? Info on the eye body that measures muscle. Well, we have the uh, uh, bioimpedance um, uh, system here, which is a big upgrade from uh, those things that you stand on your scale at home. Uh, so we can measure you that way. I may not have the correct name uh, from what I understand, the BMI is outdated and gives inaccurate information. Thanks. Well, you know, um, if you're driven by numbers, you got to work with a doctor who does a lot of gimmicks and, and testing. Um, uh, I find over these years, 43 years, people need um, a caring healthcare provider who knows them, who they feel comfortable in sharing. Uh, there are moments of binging and their lack of exercise, so you can get truthful information. And we all want to be seen in good eyes, but none of us are perfect. And so, uh, or very, very few are very perfect about their lifestyles. And so, um, uh, BMI or uh, body impedance measurements, all these things um, are just more gimmicks. Um, You'll know even a good old uh, tape measure around the waist to the hip ratio is very valuable. So we need to get away from saying, I'm waiting for that miracle machine or the miracle vitamin or the miracle um, uh, exercise or the miracle shake out there. It doesn't exist. You know what the miracle is? Obedience. And that's why I love my Bible and reading it every day. It helps me screw my head and my heart on right and realize it's discipline, self-control, and uh, taking your body, the reins of it, and, uh, you know, uh, the darts of the devil coming at you with all these advertisements and smells and people walking by you in the uh, office uh, lunchroom with all these smelly, wonderful treats that you used to touch, and you have to not touch them anymore, and you have to put them in a box and only allow yourself uh, a special occasion legitimate on your birthday or anniversary or a true holiday. And that is that is always going to be uh, get away from processed foods, drink your water, move your body, good sleep hygiene, don't eat late, eat in a uh, window of time so your gut has more resting to do, and do some resistance training. Uh, outside of that, that's doesn't cost a thing. And if you write yourself a little diary and your weight and your hip to hip uh, waist ratio and uh, be honest with what you're eating, how much water you're drinking, when you're going to bed and getting up, things like that, um, you will see um, a miracle happen. And uh, we always do see it here. So hopefully that's helped you. Uh, Solaris2510 says, what's your take on the advice in the book? The One Minute Cure by Madison Kavanaugh, which advocates for use of commercial grade hydrogen peroxide in increasing doses for a month long period. I'm familiar with hydrogen peroxide uh, use uh, in the alternative world, uh, functional world. And uh, I, I, as far as a one minute cure, it, it it is uh, valuable for viral illnesses, protection. Um, so I'm in favor of that. So I have nothing negative to say about it. It's a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution, I believe, that you mix half and half with water. You swish and gargle and either spit it out. Uh, you can do a little neti pot into your nose even. And that uh, uh, oxygen, uh, will in fact uh, uh, be very damaging to viral, bacterial, and fungal um, uh, issues. Let's see, Christina says, hi, Dr. Rita, what are natural remedies for the flu in kids? Getting them off their junk food, cookies, donuts, uh, potato chips, uh, tortilla, tortilla chips, uh, crackers, beans, rice, cereal, puddings, um, you know, all that uh, juices, Coca-Cola, uh, chocolate, milk, all this foolishness. We're killing our children. The Pediatric uh, uh, and American Dietary uh, Association is full of paid um, 
uh, conflict of interest physicians who are working with food industries and they are uh, so foolish. They say 10% of a child's diet should can be uh, refined sugars. 10%, that's ridiculous. That's evil. And that is why we have so many sick kids and sugar depresses the immune system. It's the best thing to do is get them on real food and just say, you know, there's all kinds of naughty things to do out there. And one of the naughty things is eating junk food. Uh, another thing <clears throat> to get them off of um, is uh, their computers, electronics, staying up too late uh, and helping them to uh, get outside uh, and play and let the sunshine, the ultraviolet light, the vitamin D that comes from it uh, to uh, help stimulate their immune system. Also, I believe in allowing a child to have a fever, you know, up to 103 because we know research shows that at 102, that's when the body begins to make interferon. Interferon is uh, very valuable in uh, killing viruses off. So uh, they love to market to you uh, saying, oh, be a good mommy and uh, put Tylenol uh, into your baby and get rid of that nasty old fever. Well, that fever was given by God through your innate immune system to fight off uh, viral uh, 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 invading uh, pathogens. And uh, there's a volume of uh, research showing you really shouldn't, as long as the child is alert, will drink their fluids, uh, eye to eye contact. Uh, there's no purpose in treating a fever uh, uh, under um, say 103, uh, just lots and lots of fluid and rest. And that's what you want them to do is rest. So don't suppress their immune system with sugar drinks and so forth and jello and stuff like that. Vitamin D, uh, I think most children should have, uh, you know, if they're uh, one year old, uh, they should probably have somewhere around a thousand international units of vitamin D3 uh, and their toddlers to their age, you know, first grade, around 2000 international units, of vitamin D3. And then, uh, a child, when they get to be about 40 pounds, can have two and a half to 3,000 units. See your pediatrician, do their blood level of their vitamin D, and you can get a gauge on what you're giving them and what their blood level is. But if they're 85 pounds or higher, then we start calling them adult-like, and we uh, start recommending 5,000 international units of D3 a day. Um, also zinc, I believe in giving a child a good zinc uh, multi-mineral uh, as well as uh, uh, the uh, Juice Plus series antioxidant has had volumes, literally the N number, N as in N uh, nut, uh, the N number, the number in the studies, we're talking millions of children have been studying on Juice Plus so find uh, someone to help you get onto Juice Plus as the adult, and you can get your child on it free for four years. Um, and uh, you set the example by taking it, and the child will follow through. They, when they see you drink the water, they will drink the water. When they see you eat healthier food, less carbs, they'll do the same. Um, <clears throat> Then there's Argentin silver, uh, uh, that's nanoparticulate silver. The half strength over the counter is sovereign silver. You can spray their face to decrease the viral load on their uh, face and orifice, washing their hands uh, and keeping them clean, uh, helping them to learn to use uh, Kleenexes and, and instead of you know going like that and then touching everything. Um, the other thing would be, Vitamin C is in the juice plus. So that's about it uh, right there. Um, let's see, it goes uh, headache, vomit, fever, muscle aches. Um, so, you know, fluids and uh, chicken broth and beef broth and the salts that are in them and the uh, potassium in the multi-mineral uh, you could give them. Um, water for their headache, um, treat a fever if it's 103, if the child seems uh, not to have good eye contact or respond appropriately to an instruction or 
uh, <clears throat> not be taking their fluids. Then you have to uh, treat that fever and have them seen. Trying to keep them hydrated with electrolytes. Thank you. Yeah, of course, use those electrolytes is fine. Um, <clears throat> Pedialyte is out there, but good old fashioned chicken broth and beef broth is just as good. Uh, the lack of sun here in the Midwest is hard. Yeah, but there's still light. And so there's more than just vitamin D from the light. And so get them out in the sunshine and uh, uh, playing on the seesaw and the swings and whatever they're doing, get them out there um, and uh, get their bodies moving. Let's see, Jackie Kephart says, there is so much out there now about cancer being a metabolic disease. Thank God the truth is coming out. What about blood cancers? Uh, multiple myeloma in particular. I know you aren't prescribing and aren't a oncologist. Low carb, no sugar. Well, I do believe that the blood cancers, you know, are all uh, similarly treated with the um, low carb diet. And uh, the uh, other thing is, I really think there is a case for free radical damage in the bone marrow uh, where heavy metals uh, accumulate in slow turnover of uh, material like the bones and the marrow is injured by the accumulation of all of this oxidative stressful toxic metals. And fortunately, uh, we have the ability here and uh, to uh, give you uh, the vitamin C high dose and the EDTA chelation to help pull that stuff out. And we have seen tremendous improvements and, and, uh, stabilization uh, with it. But again, you need your oncologist to have the diagnosis, get their management skills. Uh, and we come alongside your oncologist and we support uh, through uh, these modalities, your own immune system, your nutritional status and uh, detoxing. Jackie says there is so much. Oh, okay. So we caught, we went over that. Um, Yasmin says, uh, let's see. Yasmin says, are you familiar uh, with Dave Rosensweet and menopause method, <clears throat> the hormones and its sounds? <coughs> no, I'm not familiar with it. Let's see. She goes on to say, <coughs> sorry, first time. Okay. So wanted to know if you are familiar with David Rosen. Sweet, the menopause method, bioidentical hormones applied on the skin. Well, that's what I've been doing for 35, 40 years. So I'm glad that uh, David has joined in to help people. So <coughs> that's what I do is the topical primarily uh, hormones, although I have patches and although I do use oral as well. So it's a wonderful thing to do. <coughs> Beagle Mom says chemtrails. Yeah, they're pushing all this heavy metal, toxic, damaging material, creating a bio, I, I mean, a, a metal um, dome, you might say. And uh, this is then inhibiting some of the healthy sun rays that we need. Uh, Joanne Hutton says um, at Beagle Mom, chemtrails. Um, have been so bad in Southern California these past few. Absolutely, they've been terribly bad all over the place. Uh, so look up uh, Dwayne Wigington uh, for what's the name of the organization? Um, Geoengineeringwatch.org. Geoengineeringwatch.org. All one word. Geoengineering watch.org. And um, not that I agree with everything Dan uh, Wigington says, but he has a wonderful documentary on YouTube called The Dimming, D-I-M-M-I-N-G, The Dimming. And that's uh, that's the blocking out of the uh, sun. All right, we have a few minutes left, and so I can go to the uh, next one. Uh, looks like uh, what is the best supplement for constipation? Um, I know I need Fiber, water, exercise. I eat a lot of red meat, but fruits and vegetables are sparse here. So I'm looking for a supplement, please. Thank you. Well, uh, Super Aloe 450. Super Aloe 450 
uh, by orthomolecular, uh, you could um, try and uh, find a doctor uh, or call our vitamin department and try and get super aloe. That will really get you moving. Um, it's not a Sunna based, uh, I believe. It, uh, uh, Seneca is um, the most powerful uh, irritant uh, through herbs that stimulates the bowel movement. Uh, you might be hypothyroid. Hypothyroidism is associated with slow bowels. Um, you might have um, mineral deficiencies, uh, magnesium in particular. One of the things we do before we use alo, super alo 450 is we give Vitality C, the vitamin C powder. We mix it with uh, uh, OptiMag Neuro. This is a magnesium chelate uh, powder. And you put the two together. Vitamin C stimulates the bowels. Magnesium stimulates the bowel. You take it as an eight ounce drink uh, once, twice, three, four times a day and you will have bowel movements. And then uh, you go to your bowel tolerance where you start getting diarrhea, then you start backing off and seeing how much you uh, can take. Um, I don't necessarily think fiber is the answer um, either uh, alone. And hormones, estradiol is very important in normal bowel movements. If you remember during your menstrual cycle, most women when they're on their menstrual cycle will have more bowel movements. And so uh, that's this, another uh, feature of that. Okay, uh, Patricia says, I got a sty about three weeks ago. That's a, a, a little infection in the eye, uh, eyelash follicle. I use Argentan silver on it regularly. It grew to the size of a small pea. My ophthalmologist took a look to confirm it was a sty and not some growth. He said uh, to use hot compresses until it drained. It never did drain, and there is still it, and is still there, but much smaller. Another one seems to be starting on the same eye. Well, Patricia, I would certainly uh, work with trying to be very low carb. Um, I would use the warm compresses. I would use the Argentin, and um, beyond that, I think I would, uh, you know, check uh, with your doctor your blood sugars and systemic enzymes for the inflammation and follow up with your ophthalmologist for management. Tara says, hi, Dr. Rita. My dad has recently started losing a lot of weight, uh, about 30 pounds in a month, no appetite, and is getting red bruises on his arms and legs. His doctor has doubled his metformin. What would you suggest getting tested? He is 57, B-type blood. His doctor has really just shrugged this off and doesn't seem concerned. It's concerning to me. Thank you. Well, Tara, I don't know your situation, but when I see a story like that, I think of um, um, disease of the liver, uh, infectious disease of the liver, uh, damaging uh, the production of making normal clotting proteins and so forth, or cancer in the liver. Uh, so I would have that worked up and have him uh, see another doctor uh, because that's not normal. So um, have that checked out. Deborah says, uh, do you treat patients for symptoms of electromagnetic sensitivity? Thank you. Uh, Deborah. I do in the sense that, you know, I recommend uh, you um, get someone uh, on the internet that can go around your home or your apartment find out where the main power lines are, uh, where the magnetic, electromagnetic uh, amplitude of the flow of electrons is the highest. You don't want your head near the bed of that. And uh, getting electronics out of your bedroom and uh, getting a uh, oh, heavy metal test to see how much of an antenna you are for this by having all these metals in you trying to detox them out of you and figuring out your ability and a heal your blood type digestion uh, that kind of a thing um, but beyond that as far as getting uh, you know uh, uh, things to hang on your neck that are electromagnetic uh, dampeners or uh, on your wrist they make some of these um, uh, power sinks you might say uh, you could do that. You can uh, look look for those things. There are some people who specialize in measuring and have some of this material uh, to wear. Uh, there are some clothes now that have the 
uh, skull caps like beanies, uh, very nice uh, um, hats, you know, um, uh, baseball hat kind of things, or uh, I don't know what you call them, head mittens, <laughs> you know, like you would up in Chicago. I haven't been up there so long, I, I don't forget to, what it's called. But they have the uh, uh, metals in it, very tiny uh, metallic to uh, stop these waves coming through, like a Faraday cage cloth. Uh, they have um, clothes with it now, and, and it's becoming quite an industry because it is a real problem. So that's the best we could offer you um, on that. Uh, Deanna says, hi, Dr. Rita. Why is it that I always feel sick, nausea, depressed fatigue? For about two hours after taking any kind of B vitamins, B complex energy core, I cannot take on an empty stomach. Thank you for all that you do. Well, Deanna, uh, it is a powerful thing to take B vitamins. It's a tremendous uh, ringing up of the uh, metabolic function since it's involved in 400 at least biochemical pathways, uh, the various um, eight or nine B complexes, especially if they're methylated high quality like we give you, maybe you could spread it out and you wouldn't have that uh, impact. Um, and even the cells lining your gut will get the surge of energy and maybe excess production of digestive enzymes and uh, acid uh, from it because it tunes up all metabolism. So spread it out and uh, take it with food if possible. Uh, C asks the question, which doctor at TLC would be recommended for hormone replacement therapy? Thank, thank you. Well, Dr. Merrick is an OBGYN. Uh, she practices mostly just general medicine now, but she's excellent. Uh, Dr. Mitchell is still seeing people through telehealth. Uh, Dr. Kaur is excellent. Dr. Um, P.A. Uh, Patel is excellent, but she's going on maternity leave. Uh, Dr. Amber uh, Majid is excellent uh, and starting uh, up on this with a passion. Uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, am I forgetting anyone? I think they're all good. <laughs> and we do our rounds every month and we sit and we discuss difficult patients, hard questions. We review scientific articles. So we do our monthly rounds uh, where we shut everything down and we just sit at our big conference table and we go over these case studies and issues like this. I, I don't think there's any one that um, uh, I would prefer over another. And if there's a question, we can uh, just ask your doctor to bring your case up on one of our second Tuesdays of every month that we do this. By the way, that's not a good time to come to the clinic because we're so uh, all uh, in conference mode from noon till around two o'clock. So once a month, the second Tuesday of every month. Okay, and then uh, Colleen, is a woman ever supposed to stop taking hormones? Well, you see, as a Christian, my worldview is based on the Bible, uh, and I believe it. Um, uh, and I believe this is a young earth. I believe everything in the Bible and uh, the word of God is uh, without error. And so I believe that uh, God made Adam and Eve to live forever. That means Eve would have uh, been 6,000, a couple hundred years old. And she probably still would have uh, pregnancies because that would have been natural, which means she would have had her hormones. Um, I don't think there's marriage in heaven uh, after we die. Um, so I don't think we're going to have uh, babies in that sense anymore. But in the meantime, our bodies were designed to depend on hormones for healing, repair, uh, general contractor work. And so, yes, I, I do think I'm going to take them. Um, and I've been around women who have been on it with me for 30, 40 years now. And so, yeah, I think it's very good to use. Jill says, my ferritin uh, in December 23rd was 10 Iron total 62, iron binding 379, iron saturation 16. So you're low on your iron. I eat animal protein, low carb diet, first time blood donor, uh, October 31, 23. Obviously holding off another donation, good. But what can I do to raise ferritin besides beef? Or do I not even need to worry? Thank you, doctor. Well, let your doctor know, Jill, uh, so we can recheck your ferritin and your... Um, 
uh, percent saturation, your uh, total iron binding uh, 379 just means your body is actively generating uh, iron binding proteins to try and um, increase the uh, take of it. We do have the herbal um, hemavite, H-E-M-I-V-I-T-T-E, hemavite. Uh, and that is a very nice, gentle way to do that uh, is take two uh, of those tablets uh, twice a day or three times a day, little little herbal capsules. That would be a suggestion, Jill. But let your doctor know so we can uh, remeasure your ferritin, give you maybe a little bit of a boost. Also, you could eat liver uh, once, once a week. I eat liver once a week. I love it with fried onions. Laura says, greetings from Oklahoma, a former patient. Well, hello, Laura. Few functional medicine doctors here. So at a traditional medical, medical clinic for a bone scan, I'm 71. Hip mean T-score is uh, minus 1.4. That's pretty good. And was told you have osteopenia. That's true. And they gave you a drug, Fosamax. Yuck. I don't take any prescription medicine and suspect and, and suspicious of this drug. What say you? Gratitude and blessing for you. Well, Laura, um, are you on uh, natural hormone uh, replacement, progesterone? Are you on estradiol? Are you taking vitamin D at least 10,000 national units a day? Uh, and uh, with K2, 90 micrograms or more. Uh, are you stomping? Um, are you uh, doing weight resistance training for your bones? Uh, this, this is not bad, Laura. Uh, so I would strongly encourage you to uh, uh, go to acam.org, try and find a functional doctor, even if you could do telehealth, uh, and then try and be on natural hormones, your vitamin D, K2, uh, eating your low carb, rich protein diet, take your digestive enzyme to help you stomp around like you're in a, a 15 second temper tantrum with, uh, your bare feet on cement, you know, so you can get that shutter up your leg and that'll help you. Uh, and then, uh, I Lee, I, I think it's the name, Dr. Elifer, God bless you, sister. May I get your opinion? I'm a 35 year old male, six, two, blood type A, 338 pounds. I had an appendicitis and fistula leakage from my sigmoid colon emergency surgery. It's been six months then and have a stoma now. I have to lose weight before the reversal surgery. Is it safe for a 21 day fast with a stoma? I don't know your case individually, Eileen, but in general, it should be. Um, I hope you're not a diabetic. I hope you're not um, with any other um, uh, uh, comorbidity, uh, heart disease, uh, diabetes, hypertension. In general, you should be able uh, to do that. And, um, but you need to be su supervised. Uh, so I don't know your state of health, Eli, but have a good doctor and have um, a good multivitamin mineral, uh, have a good electrolyte or salt your water, uh, uh, put a dash in at least two of your drinks or have some chicken broth or beef broth. That won't give you any calories. It'll give you um, electrolytes. And uh, let us know how you do. Um, and may the Lord bless you and uh, give you strength as his mighty man of valor and a, a great uh, ambassador for our, our great king and God and uh, his only son, Jesus Christ, our savior and stand in that strength. And hopefully that'll work out very well for you, but do get uh, oversight with that. So I think we are 704. I've gone over, I've gotten through two of these pages and do we get anything else here? Uh, Sophie says my thyroid makes lots of uh, reverse T3, my free T3 is 3.6. Sophie, I like your uh, uh, free T3 at 3.6. Uh, if your triglycerides and your diet is good and you're exercising, uh, I don't think I would worry about it. Uh, but I would have to look at your whole case and know you personally to say much more. Jackie uh, says, how do you find a doctor that does chelation therapy? Well, you go to acam.org, A-C-A-M.org. And look on find a physician near you. 
Uh, I am now living in Tennessee, but from Southern California. Can I get chelation at your office when I visit? Sure you can, Jackie. Yeah, absolutely. Sophie uh, goes on again to say, I have done everything in the book to get it down. And as a result, my estradiol fluctuates like a roller coaster, which makes life miserable. Why I ask about cellular receptors, I see. I think too much is made of reverse T3. Uh, I, don't, I don't even worry about it. I don't even test it, Sophie. Uh, I would stay stable, steady as she goes with what you're doing and not worry about your reverse T3. I don't know your case individually, but that's my general take on reverse T3. It's, a, I think, a much to do about nothing. Yes, you know, there's biochemistry, there's research, there's data. Uh, but that's my experience. Uh, Solera says, Dave Rosensweet recommends bioidentical hormones like Dr. E, but delivers it specifically as organic bases for the creams. All right. Well, I think mine are organic too. Uh, and, and good for him. I mean, I'm all for as natural as you can make it. So uh, God bring us more people trying to help the deer creation that he made, how special each of us are. We're all related. We're all of one race. And may we treat each other with the respect that um, our creator has for us. He so loved us that he gave his only begotten son to pay for our sins. And so with that, um, I got through two of these three full pages. Now I only have one instead of two left over last time. So to those of you from today who uh, went in, Pat and Deborah and Mona, Leah, Mary, Kristen, Mary, Jennifer, Christine, Joanna, I'm sorry I couldn't get through, um, but I have to uh, bring this to an end. I can see that I really should do a, another uh, show um, twice a week. So uh, pray for me for strength and that I can do it. If this is a, a blessing to you and you're uh, helped with this, please uh, like and subscribe. Please share this with a friend. And uh, with that, I will say God bless and take care. All right. See you next Tuesday.